Oh, man. Uh, you know, I guess it's no small wonder that I don't connect with too much superhero pro stuff that's on the market right now. Because, you know, listening to the various interviews with a lot of the writers, they'll constantly mention, you know, Marvel, 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 Marvel. And it's like, Jesus! Uh, I guess I guess a lot of people just don't gravitate towards uh, the aspirational anymore. Because me, I'm the exact opposite. I, I could... Uh, Truly, I could care less about Marvel nine times out of ten. Um, the only stuff I really watched from Marvel's end of things is I watched the big Guardians of the Galaxy because it had a space opera bent. Like, if they legitimately would do the Richard Rider stuff properly, I'd probably watch that too. Because, yeah, I'm, I'm more of a space opera person. And of the two, I think DC, you know, back when they actually wrote stories, offered a lot of that via the Green Lanterns and eventually through more of their line. Even, you know, because again, Superman was a good springboard for some of that stuff too. Ah, uh, bad. But yeah, uh, it gets a little bit, it gets very tiring just hearing like, oh yes, I was influenced by the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's like, oh, uh, it it just showcases like, uh, or if they're they're talking about other stuff, it's like, yeah, Batman the animated series. And I'm like, oh, okay, another one of those. It, yeah, it, it's just that as far as my contemporaries go, most of them do not key in on Silver Age DC at all, or Golden Age DC, or the aspirational. I mean, as far as, like, people who are actively writing something and putting stuff out. I don't know what the Kids Sensation guy would uh, would do, really, because they haven't interviewed him. Um, and they haven't interviewed quite a few other people that I enjoy from the superhero pros standpoint. But, again, the majority of them that they have interviewed, it's like, no wonder um, their wheelhouse doesn't connect with mine. Far too often, too many of them do go the, the superhero is in school route, you know, whether it's a superhero training school or they're just fumbling through high school. I just find myself not connecting so much with that anymore. And that's why I kind of did like the faster age up in Uplift Protocol, but just showcasing a few critical world building moments to carry stuff along. Because I just rather ha have superheroes that are in the kind of like the prime of their uh, career, just in terms of they already know how to use their powers. You know, they're still coming up against things and everything, but I just didn't want to do that overall big long training montage <laughs> that could last a couple of books. Because I did pick up a few more superhero pros books for the, the Black Friday sale, and I'll... I'll probably read through some of them later to see what it, what's up. Um, the the one synopsis for that Renegade X thing, I did like the synopsis for the latest book where his goody two-shoes uh, uh, like mirror-verse brother comes in and upstages him. I have a feeling I'm going to enjoy that character more than Damien himself. Uh, just because it sounds like he's pissed off that his, his mirror brother is a hokey goody two-shoes and it's like but that's what I want. I want a corny ass goody two shoes character. <laughs> oh man, it's just hard finding some of them. I mean, that's the reason why I keep pumping out, you know, you know, for um, uplift, uh, uplift protocol, for uh, new Olympus saga, and for you know, Silver Empire's Heroes Unleashed, because they do have those corny uplifting characters in them too alongside other different types so they're not just catering to to one wheelhouse that's mostly made up of marvel-esque type characters they're also putting in dc um archetypes in there as well so you can have characters you enjoy to f you know love to follow that are in these both these series uh yeah because there's more to, it, it, I'm trying to think of what what was it um oh yeah when I've been watching various videos every once in a while you know while I'm just writing in the background doing stuff it, they keep hamming up the whole f you got to put in your character's flaws first it's like why isn't anybody talking about any virtues put in your character's main virtue first don't think about the flaws first and from my writing perspective think about 
each character's main virtue. Especially when it comes to your heroes or your protagonists. What is their main virtue? Flaws are a dime a dozen. You know, because since everybody and their brother talks about it, and some people even think to put in flaws that are more like, oh, the character has uh, asthma, or th that's just a physical setback. Um, so, yeah, it's just it's just one of those things where it's just like, like, dang, I need some more coffee, man. I'll be right back. Plus, like I've said before, it doesn't help that, you know, the superhero pro setup is a cluster duck on Amazon. So, yeah, even if whether or not you uh, uh, agree one way or another, um, the, the, the I'll link the site again, but the superhero fiction thing does at least help people get some of their superhero prose theme stuff out in the open easier. Sometimes I can find new stuff by, you know, playing word salad with Amazon, but it doesn't always end up that way. Um, but again, I get—I guess I'll also link that Renegade X thing up below. People can take a look at it, and see what they think. Me personally, I—I I will look at other people's superhero pro stuff just to see like what kind of flavor do they give it, and if I can even incorporate it into my uh, Uplift Protocol stuff. But for the most part, it's just because they have so many protagonists that are still in high school that it's just like. Well, I guess it could give me some ideas for when when Zach eventually hits his teenage years, but um, the way he's had to grow up, he's going to be a little bit more mature in some areas of childhood than others, just because uh, he had to grow up with the whole Typhurian legacy from the get-go. So there's that difference, but it does give me a good idea of kind of like some of the mentality of certain characters, depending on their age group. Uh, but I guess it just overall goes to, you know, different wheelhouse, different tastes. I don't really want my characters to be waffling around too much about, like, like who's dating who. It's more of a joke of, like, they're all making bets with each other to see, to see what Eliza will do next. And they mean it in a good-hearted way. Kind of like, um funny teasing that Battlefront 5 does, especially like when Veer was talking with Ivanova about like, oh, oh, we're, we're, we might, we, no, 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 this stage is that, and that stage is this, and, and then Ivanova at the end of the conversation after he leaves is like, oh my god, sex, ah, <laughs> and, and it's with, and it's talking about the different stages with the, you know, with the Centauri, which is pretty freaking hilarious, I mean, because that, that, that's ultimately how I'll approach some of the situations, and most of it won't be on screen, like I've said before. You'll get maybe hugs and kisses and a mostly fade to black. Like, the, Or you'll get the results where, you know, uh, to p put it bluntly, like when, when Doc was coming out, she had fixed her makeup and fixed her collar because, you know what, Eliza might be enthusiastic, but she still needs, she still needs some pointers. But, of course, you know... Um, Lorraine doesn't care. She'll she'll give pointers. You know, <laughs> that's how just that's just how it works. There's certain sometimes with like relationship dynamics. You know, one person will know more than the other, um, in, in some setups. But plus, um, <laughs> let's just say it, I, I find it funny when Eliza is literally asking the the forger vi slash AI, you know, like, said an AI that, that it's like, um, how do I do this? <laughs> like, oh, 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 wait, wait. That, that's why I had the other joke where it's like, yes, oh, you want to go to first base? Okay, here, wait, I found some pointers for you, Captain. <laughs> it's like, oh, Jesus. Yeah, see, that's, that's how I make fun of certain little things. But I, I don't end up one of making that the extreme big focus, because otherwise that, that pretty much turns your book into a, a romance primary, which I don't mind some romance, I just don't want it to overtake the whole book. Um, so that's why, if for the most part, except for a few people in the main ensemble, everybody else uh, uh, is pretty much hitched. They're, they're already married, or some other effect where it's like, okay, they're already hooked up, so I don't really have to go through too much of the, the courtship rituals. Um, 
So, th there you go. Uh, I guess I could put this in kind of like a ramble about Uplift Protocol mm, and what I, other things I see with the uh, superhero pros. But let me see if I can pull up something else because I am listening to some of these interviews to try to wake me up before I start writing some more stuff because it's like I need coffee and everything else. Woo, here we go. And it looks like from some of these interviews, some of them, uh, some of the other writers for Superhero Pros really don't like the, the secret identity aspect because they, they find it pretty, like, reality-breaking or unrealistic. But, I mean, to be honest, how I approach Superhero Pros is, like, I love that corny s stuff. You know what? It, it it's just adds a fun dynamic I don't see in too many things anymore. Um... Even with other mainline superhero pro stuff, they, all of them for the most part are far too influenced by Game of Thrones. They gravitate more towards stuff like The Boys and, you know, some more of like, oh, it's got to be hard, gritty reality and, and dystopia and, and, you know, there's quite, there's so much to pick through with that. There's so much stuff that can cater to that wheelhouse, so I'm just... I'm just trying desperately to offer counterbalance. And it's like not like I don't have anybody reading up with protocol right now. I'm like, no. Uh, uh based on again on the views I got, I, I pretty much I'm pretty sure I have a solid twenty people following this thing now. Um some catch up in, in spurts. Um some checked out the first five, six I uh issues so far. So you know, it, it is sometimes it's hard to tell from the overall click level, especially that one chapter in Book of Zero Twenty Three that it has over fourteen hundred clicks now. I'm like that. Sometimes the the darn robot stuff kind of like messes it up. But what helps is if I click on it individually and then see the dates people clicked on things. Yeah, I'm going through for most of them, and yeah, I I'm pretty sure I have a solid audience of like twenty people now just based on the clicks and on the dates that it happened. Overall, I'll usually get anywhere between 10 and 15 people looking at a issue when it first released. You know, so, and because sometimes, you know, depending on what time of day or night I release it, depending on where people live, um, it, it, you know, it could initially hit with eight hits or it could initially climb up to about 13 and eventually most of them will get around 18 to 20 and then you know I'm seeing older numbers on other issues near the beginning starting to uptick even a few clicks from parlor itself um cuz the, the blog will keep track of like where people are coming in from like what browser and maybe like what what um part of the world they're coming in from so, yeah, I got a couple of fans that are outside the United States. I got a few Canadians, and majority of it is within the United States, or unless you have your VPN set up to show that you're in the United States, even if you're somewhere else. You know, that, that, that's all I'm really getting from everything now. It's like I, I'm starting to build a, a, a um, pretty good base, I think. And that's okay. I mean, by the time the series ends, I'll probably even have more people. Because some people are probably going to wait until I'm done. <laughs> you know. And trust me, I'm going to try to go at a decent clip to where I can get out. You know, get it, I'll try to get up to like four books a year. Because right now, like, man, I, yeah, again, having, I'm almost to the end of my second book. You know, I got book zero, book one, and then I'm going to start on book two after about a week's break and uh that'll probably be around the middle of December and then I'll get going on that and hopefully I can get it down to where I can get out you know three or f four books a year that that's my goal I, I um maybe I can get up to five who knows but depending on how how many plot lines continue to develop because sometimes when I'm writing that's the thing it's like oh like, I, I should go back and edit this because I'm changing this thing up a little bit and so I make notes. Because the main file has most of the corrections and edits right now. And a few of the added jokes like, you know, sentient versus sapient. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, sometimes it just makes me laugh. Oh, I love it. Um, uh, so Because Twitter does give some interesting feedback every once in a while. <laughs> but yeah, w when you're going through like uh, different aspects of superhero pros 
you and if you don't see enough of your wheelhouse in there you gotta make it, it it's because you can't really sit around and wait for other people to to put out stuff that you want at least that's what i've seen um can some wheelhouses really ultimately tie into you really good yes they can um and for the most part for superhero pros most of the people that are getting fed really well are the ones that enjoy Marvel type setup characters. Even in most cases, older style Marvel rather than, you know, anything after 2010 kind of Marvel. Except for those movies. It seemed like those movies did stay a little bit more, like, at least they had the, the spirit of the archetypes up there. But I've only seen a handful of them. Uh, I think I watched the first two Thor movies, and yeah, and I watched the two Guardians of the Galaxy movies, and I mainly watched Thor because the guy was legitimately funny. Um, but overall, yeah, Marvel's stable house of people have not really, they, they haven't really engaged me, and that happens. It, it for whatever reason, it seems like. Maybe the reason why most people will reference Marvel, even in superhero prose land, or the cinematic universe, is because those movies did garner more attention before the Koof Koof basically KO'd everybody. And of the DC outings, other than their animated stuff, their live action things, like, really only the Wonder Woman movie got closest to what the actual archetype was for that character. It's just, that's how it goes. And sorry, I had to clear out my sinuses again. Yay, allergies. Woo. But yeah, like I've said before, um, I, I want to feed the stable house of, of Supreme Corny. Um, you know, aspirational. Good for the sake of good. Which, uh, again, seems to be the exact opposite of what most in superhero pros land are doing. Except for a handful of exceptions. So far. So far, from what I've seen, even Critical Blast's um, setup, and I'll link their book below, at least they start their guy off kind of like, you know, 18 at the end, near the end of high school kind of stuff. I mean, I get it. Like, a lot of superhero origin stories generally start out with the, them like, oh, we gained it, you know, in, in high school or, like, right where people reach, like, puberty usually. Uh, it's just I, I just hope to see more people starting their protagonists out in their mid twenties or late twenties or even early thirties, you know, just to see a little bit more of that dynamic. Because you know, I myself, I'm I'm older now. It just appeals to me more when I see characters that are uh, at least you know, yeah, at least mid twenties, um, that have a little bit of their training behind them, and they're not as uh, wet behind the ears. Um, th that's about it. I, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I could really ramble on about. Um, let's see. Uh, I guess it's just because current trends do um, cater more towards the Watchmen's of the universe. And I find that very disheartening most times because it's like I want to see more of my wheelhouse out in the open um, I I don't consider the Superman setups boring uh, but most people who are outputting stuff consider Superman boring or the Superman type of setups boring they consider him like too preachy they consider him too straight laced they consider him too perfect and things like that it's like but then you look at, at um, stuff like My Hero Academia and even though that's in a school superhero training setup, uh, the world building where it showcases like what other heroes do when the, once they're beyond school, I mean, I guess in a way is even though that has a school you know superhero setup, it, it does it in such a way where um, it, it doesn't go through every single point of training the hero up. They have stuff happen to them outside of the school aspect that helps accelerate their training. And the thing of it is, it's because 
they have likable characters that I'll pay attention to My Hero Academia. You know, I'll catch up ever so often and get a few more volumes. That's the main difference. Like, a lot of superhero prose doesn't have very likable characters to follow. They might have, like, these dramatic people that are super edge, 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 and, like, everything's going to die, everything's hopeless. You know, that's the dystopia aspect. But even even Fist of the North Star has taught me you could have a dystopia but have hopeful, likable characters in it or characters that fight for truth and justice and honor and things like that. You could still have that in a dystopia. I just don't know why people don't try to emulate that more often. We have got to make that more popular and mainstream again to where it's like we got to kick the 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 um Alan Moore's out of the way and like hey, we need to have a a little bit more prevalent themes in our wheelhouses that catch more people. Cuz I'm guessing that's the reason why some people have fallen off to the wayside with reading because they're not getting catered to. And if they're not getting catered to, they get lost in the shuffle of tons of uh, got-inspired stuff. I mean, granted, the fans that love that stuff are getting fed hand over fist to where they're bursting to the point of, uh, of sheer overload of stuff that they can choose from. While the rest of us are just kind of like standing in the food line where it's like, oh, uh, scraps? Ah, I see, scraps, got it. So again, that's why I'll always push more of my wheelhouse on my channel and you'll definitely know which one I prefer the most because uh, I still have to add more to the superversive slot I'm working on reading through more series to add to that because I like to add things you know, for that area as long as I've read a majority of what's put out like if it's a series or if it's a trilogy and you know with writing and everything else that does t basically take a bit of my uh, free time yeah. But I do try to at least read one book a week nowadays to, to really like get into it and see if I can find something else that has more of a superversive bent to it. I guess that's about it for now. Um, hmm. Or I've, I've even said that before, but I'm just trying to see if there's like anything else I really want to, to add in on the superhero pro side of things. Hmm. Let's see. Um... So besides less, you know, teenage protagonists or school setups, I, I kind of want to see more, like, like kind of mysteries. Um, some of the superhero pros that has caught my eye is, is the ones where it has, you know, superhero uh, settings, but the, the cops are trying to investigate different things that might happen. That's an interesting bent that I don't see too much of. Kind of like how, I mean, even though it's comparing more to a little bit to dead IP land but the the Gotham Central thing did stick out to me a bit even though I'm not much for Batman just because you're seeing how some superhero stuff intersects with people that have just normal jobs which you know that's th that does that does open up an interesting dynamic um once book two launches for Upload Protocol, you'll get to see a little bit more of the regular day-to-day -day of New Ashbury. It's mainly because book zero and book one, uh, I wanted to use to kind of do uh, regular mysteries built into the actual world building. And you get to see a little bit of the wider things beyond Earth. But since book two is going to pretty much intimately involve Earth, you'll get to see more things on the earth side of things at, at a regular level because you'll get to see how I um, insert the whole uh, zombie thing into it where they're not going to be really kind of like zombies in the Walking Dead sense. It's going to be more like their constructs kind of like when Gargoyles had the golem construct going after things to protect but this one Unity perverts all sorts of things so it's going to be more like Toth commands an army of constructs and he's going to lay siege to the earth and then it's going to be up to you know the legion of tomorrow and all the superheroes that reside there to help combat this this whole thing but you know if you've been reading along in book one you know things aren't going to quite go according to his plan and then by the end of book two 
some of that will be resolved. But then with book three, I'm going to start putting in the stuff to reawaken the Markav, you know, completely. And that's going to throw in a, a few monkey wrenches because then uh, not so much that, that uh, Earth is going to be like the stereotypical, like, oh, we don't want aliens. Like, no, it's going to be more like, um, uh-oh, the, the, the Markav are a little bit vulnerable right now because they're trying to set up their stuff and humanity is going to have to help protect their solar, s their solar system from, you know, pirates and a few other interesting surprises. And so by the end of book three, you'll get to see... Um, uh, Eliza and her brother get to come out in the open more so with their their belt shenanigans. Like all this stuff is slowly building up to the end of the end of the arc of book three, and then you'll get to see how that will kind of taper off and set up things for season two, which the whole entire thing of season two is going to be introducing more elements of like the uplift council you know going to typha uh meeting with different heads of state with um with the other races you know of the general milky way galaxy and i might even go a bit further out uh you just don't know because uh, i have ba again i have the basic story beats written down but they're only a couple of lines each like you know basic story beats for book one book zero you know book two book three i have all the basic story beats for the whole series but sometimes depending on what happens it's like um some things get shuffled around a little bit it that's the reason why you've seen a few little developments outside of earth like you know what's happening with snake charmer which will that certain parts of his thing will be resolved in, in the escape issue you know uh where he's going to start building up his kind of like team of ne'er do wells and whatnot um you'll get to see a little bit more of the all fathers operations through them because eventually i'm going to have them work with the all father to do certain things and each of them has a reason why they're going to be doing that. X Mill is going to do that because he really f hates the A years and wants to get back at them. And who else to go to to do that than go to the uh, basically the uh, uh, established enemy of that house, <laughs> you know? And even Toth and everything, um, even no part of his thing is going to re be resolved at the end of book two. I'm going to use him as a springboard to showcase a little bit of a, a mirror universe because certain aspects of that is going to play a part in kind of the end game portion of the series. So we'll see what happens. Have a good day, everybody.